the most high. I ain't gonna I got something better to do. I got, better to do. I got somebody better and more important than me with you. Alright? So that's what that's what I do when you put something over what the most high has set aside for us to do. Alright? So um, and it could be anything. Like I say, you anybody, wife, whoever, husband, whatever. Immolation. What is immolation? This is leaven. I mean, we're we talking about leaven. Be like somebody. Trying to be like somebody. How many people do that? The whole world almost, man. You know, Jay-Z, them Beyonce, them uh, whoever, you know what I'm saying? They, they the basketball they, players. They, the football they, players. They envy the salt of the earth. Uh, how you gonna emulate? It says emulation is a sense of what am I doing trying to be like some emulate means to be like somebody. Try to okay, be copy. like copy them mm -hmm. to the point where I fashion my life around theirs. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, you know, whoever started wearing a mohawk and now I'm wearing one just for the fact that they wearing one. Mm -hmm. Whoever starts sagging the pants and whoever came up with that, now I'm sagging my pants just because somebody else is. This is emulating. I'm emulating somebody else. I'm trying to be like somebody else. I want to be like Mike. I'm going to dance every time I dance. I want to dance like Michael Jackson. I'm emulating Michael Jackson. That's why later on in the scripture you'll see Paul says to emulate the Mashiach. It, 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 as King James reads that follow me as I follow Christ. That's incorrect. He says to emulate the Mashiach as I emulate the Mashiach. See what I'm saying? The Mashiach is the monk. So Paul is saying to be like him. Be like him and let him be the monk that the other, what you're trying to be like. Uh, so, uh, all right, so uh, witchcraft. What's Smoke another word for witchcraft? Drug sorcery. Drug sorcery. Yeah. It's open news on the thing. Control. Open news on the thing. Who drugs? Who do? Who do? But what's the biggest source of witchcraft in the United States? What he just said. It said it's drug medicine. Pharmaceutical, which means witchcraft. Controlling. That's what it means. And pharmaceutical is another word for Witchcraft. It's sorcery. That's what drugs are. They're sorcery. They're, they're a potion put together to make you feel like you are healed or you, uh, whatever is wrong with you is done away. Or do you want to make your husband uh, love you more? You tell you put something up on his pillow, voodoo, like one said. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you know, hey, 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 uh, hey you, know that, you, more. you know that makes sense because, like, anytime, anytime you watch, like, an ancient movie, like, back in the day or something like that, they always doing something with the fire, like, whoosh. Exactly. And then the fire just go up or whatever. Exactly. But you don't know what drugs they put in the fire to make it just go make up. Little, but, I mean, down. it's the same thing. Huh? I said they do the little blue pink. Yeah, yeah, blue pills, the, the antibiotics, the, uh, that, right the all this medicine that's called sorcery. <laughs> you see, they get they, they ain't trying to hide it because what you see is what symbol do they have for it? The snake, that's the snake around, around the pole. That represents what? The serpent. The serpent. I mean, for what they using it for? For yeah. sorcery. I mean, yeah. it's 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 for it's, it, was, it was yeah for what they using for it what for? They use it yeah, because there was a brazen serpent in the in the. Torah, yeah, but another type. Uh, yeah. So the sorcery is the u the drug use, and the the word for it is pharmaceuticals. All right, and the word for it is pharmaceuticals. Uh, so rebellion is also like this. yeah, rebellion is that the it, it's just <laughs> like sorcery when you rebel against the Most High Commandment. Wrath and strife kind of go together. But so what's wrath? It's when I'm upset. Piece of rage. Yeah. I'm out of control. Right. We can get mad though, right? But we just can't go against the, the law. But be angry. Yeah, be angry. angry. Yeah. Ralph is once you that's beyond that's man, different. Different. Oh, okay. beyond okay. anger. Okay, okay, okay. okay. But the thing beyond anger is yeah. right. Right. Ralph I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready to pounce on somebody now. You know, that's Ralph. When you when you to the point where you can't control yourself, that's what Ralph is. You cannot control what you're about to do to somebody. All right, so strife. What is strife? Striving against somebody. Always want to contend with somebody. Always arguing. Always got to start something at all times. See, all this stuff is leaven. 
And he's telling you, and I'm trying to, we're trying to prepare to get the leaven out. I'm always contentious. I'm always want to argue. I'm always got to be right. Or the other person always got to be right. Or whatever. This is strife. We striving at all times. I'm, I'm, you know, you meet people that's full of it. I mean, you could say the smallest things, and it's just boom. No, uh, 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 it's all right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Right off the bat, they full of strife. Yeah, full of it. Can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. And they think, and, and it's a lot of people who go to church just like this. And I'm picking on church folk, but it's a lot of people who go to church that's like this. They full of strife. They always got to argue. Always got to be right. Always got something to say. And what the Messiah say? He said, "Take the low seat." Yes. When you get into an argument, he says, uh, take the love, hold your peace. What does hold your peace mean? Yeah. If I hold my peace, then Ralph can't get in there yeah. because I'm full of peace. When I let my peace go, then there's no peace in there. So what fills up? Ralph. Yeah. That's, that's, that, that's what you feel. That's what you feel. You can feel it coming up. You can literally, this ain't no spiritual thing. Now, we out of the spiritual stuff. We talking about normal, natural, concrete stuff. You can feel Ralph coming up in you. You can feel yourself getting so mad you about to bust somebody in their head. I mean, you can feel it coming. It's starting to bubble it up. You're like, oh, boy, I'm getting mad now, boy. I'm getting hot now, y'all. Hey, hey, you better go on now. You can literally feel it coming up. And you, he said, but she, I said, look, 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 hold on, hold your peace. Don't, don't fall into that temptation. Hold your peace. And that means that what I do, I hold. My, if I hold my peace, that wrath can't come up. Mm -hmm. When I let my peace go, how do I let my peace go? When I indulge in whatever is making me mad, I let my peace go. Yeah. If I'm able to just, hey, look, I'm good. Hey, you got that. I'm gone. That's me holding my peace because I know I'm going to get uh, angry in a minute. <laughs> so in order to hold my peace, you can have it. I'm taking the low seat. Even though I was one even wrong, I'm taking the low seat. You can have it, you know. Uh, it says, "Don't let the the sun go down on your wrath." We talked about this before. How do I not let the sun go down on my wrath? I gotta do something. I gotta do something. I gotta forgive, like you said. You said I gotta let it go. I gotta forgive. I gotta forgive, regardless. I don't, it don't matter who fault it is. The commandment is, "Don't let the sun go down on your wrath." And they say, "If it's uh, your wife fault." Or if it's your husband's fault, or if it's your children's fault, it's okay to let it go down. Or if it's the person next door fault, there's no if there. He said, don't let it go down. Why? Because it's a commandment. He doesn't want you to engage in having wrath. Get so mad. You, man, you get so mad, you can't even think straight no more. I mean, your logical thinking is gone. You're like, man, I'm finna, you know, I just said, I'm gonna get beast mode on this joke boy you know what I'm talking about you, know, you say that you turn into like an animal and just go crazy on whoever whatever but you have to learn to control it okay so now that's ref of sedition what well, is sedition anybody know go ahead Lou. what oh I, I what okay <laughs> All right, Luke. I got you oh uh, uh, Oh, uh, all right. So, all right. So, what is sedition, everybody? Anybody? I, I got I you. I got to download, download the Bible dictionary. <laughs> it's the same as strife. Strife. Somebody you wrong. constantly Some, not. It's not, like stirring up arguments. Somebody look up yeah. sedition right quick. Uh, you got to look it. I'll tell you what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the word we're looking for. Instigator. Yeah, that's it. Instigator. That's, 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 that's the same word for sedition. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro. Oh. Uh, I'm hey, telling you, man, so they, 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 they yeah, talking about you over there, bro. I know this is going to make you mad. And with this intent, now, the intent got to be there. The intent behind it. Hey, little sister. I, I ain't want to tell you, but you know, see your husband. Now, your husband might have been doing something <laughs> legal. Okay. I seen your husband. He was uh, he was coming off of that street. You know what's on that street there? Now, this is me being messy. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? The correct way to do this is, hey, bro, I see you come on this street. I know it ain't nothing. I'm just, I'm just hollering, Hold on, bro. Say it again. Say uh, it again. The correct way is what? To, you come, hey, bro, I see you come. I come to you. Another to come way. to who? You. That's the correct way. Now, this is scripture. The scripture I say to come, if you have all against your brother, you go to your brother. 
That's what's you up. don't go to your brother's friends. I ain't waiting for your brother's mom. Come to me, then, then, you know. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's what sedition is. Be being messy. I'm going to come to... I'm gonna come to this brother here and tell him about you know this 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 sister over that brother back there instead of going to that brother back there and you know killing all this from the jump. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, this is what uh, sedition is. It's being messy, it's calling somebody. It's not just being messy. It's calling somebody else to be messy. That's the true definition of it. Yeah. Causing somebody else to be messy. My intent was to just get you riled up so you come over and be messing with it. Like, you know, in the break room at work, you know, they get to talking about somebody and they want to try to pull you in the conversation. Yeah. That's sedition. That's what you should be looking out for. Leaven. Now, all this stuff is leaven. Now, this stuff is sin. And one of the people, because people don't really get into this. They just, I'll oh, keep the commandments, but this, this is leaven also. You know, sedition. Take, taking part in that kind of stuff or... So, uh, what else we got? Uh, uh, heresy. What is heresy? Like, basically like false doctrine. False doctrine. Part of the truth. Part of the truth. Trying to borderline blasphemy for real. Trying to, yeah. So what is heresy? Heresy is false doctrine, basically. I'm teaching something that I know ain't true. That's against the scripture. That's against the scripture. Well, I want you, you know, come to my little assembly, so I'm like, hey. Make that money. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm teaching you to pay your tithes. Well, that's a gift. That's heresy. That's a false doctrine. There's nowhere for nobody to pay any tithes with money. That's a false doctrine. That's what the crib up in the church now, in the, uh, in the regular church, is heresy. Because I need your money. So I'm going to come up with a doctrine that sounds good. And it's called heresy. Or uh, hypocrisy, so I ain't like, um, I'm doing this, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to tell you to do it. That's heresy or hypocrisy, all working together. I'm not going to pay tithes, but I'm going to tell you, what, who the preacher pay tithes to? It's a whole on seven, who he pay tithes to? Nobody, right? What's up, dog? Uh, he a on, I, on, never about about it like, I never thought about it like You've been tricked. Just, yeah, hey, hood wing. Preacher yeah, paid tithes too. I never thought about that. And then, and then yeah, and before, and before you say that my pastor paid to this pastor, I want you to go all the way to the top of the pastors, and when you get to the top of them, the bishop, who he paid to? Nobody. That's what they're gonna tell you. He don't have to pay to. He's the man of God. And that's heresy. That's hypocrisy. Because if you promote me paying tithes, then you should also pay them. The summer, I don't care. All the way up to the top of the ladder, the head man in charge, he should be paying to somebody. But it's not like that because it's not a scripture. But when you get to what the scripture does say about tithes and how it was animals and grain, because the priests didn't need money, they needed well, food. They needed, they needed food. clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could have gave them some money. They, could buy. they couldn't leave the temple. So how are they going to buy some? They don't even need money. Yeah. <laughs> they supposed to work on the temple day and night. They were to make sure it was clean and polish, make sure all that blood that they were doing all day long. They ain't got time to go shopping at Walmart. So the people's job was to bring them the things they needed. That's what tithe was. Bring me a tenth of your grain. You got a whole field of grain. Bring me a tenth. The tenth of it. Mm -hmm. And they lived in Jerusalem. Too. You got a bunch of animals that just came up that you that your, your cow just had a bunch of them. Bring me the tenth one. Mm -hmm. That way the priests had what they needed. All right? So, all right. So that's heresy. Okay? So envying. Same as that. It's just by emulation. Oh, well, a little bit different. Envying. What is envying? I'm jealous of mine. Jealous. That's what yeah. Judah do to Ephraim. Well, basically, you end up hating them. <laughs> like jealousy. <laughs> Another word for envying? We, we ain't finna go there tonight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm jealous of you. I want what you got. I want your husband. I want your wife. I don't want my own wife. I want your wife. <laughs> it's me envying. I like the way your wife look. I don't want like the way my wife look. I want your wife. I want your husband. And I ain't, ain't funny at that, so I ain't finna say I like the way your hood look. But y'all y'all get the picture though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all get the picture. I want your Stella, I want your car. I know they make more than just yours, but I want yours. I wanna be Whatever you got, I want. I want your house. You know, you see this in the Bible time and time again. When some king, he wanted that man's vineyard. They involved them. That, he was envying. He could have he went and put a vineyard anywhere. 
But he wanted to take this man video. David, he wanted Uriah's wife. He could have got anyone. one. But he wanted Uriah's wife. This is envy. That's messed up. It's all jacked up. So now we to see what envy is. When I want what you got. Jealousy. All right. Angry because he had a... A whole, a whole slew of them. A bunch of women. Come and all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had a whole bunch of them. So you guys greed too. 5,000 concubines. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon. 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 Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. That's Solomon. Yeah. But he's Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. Solomon. Yeah. He was running around taking them wives. You take them too? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, take them, man. <laughs> murders. Murders. Okay. Murders. I can have concubines. All right. So. Is it okay for me to murder somebody? No. No. Uh -uh. You sure? At all. Oh yeah. Huh? No, it's not okay. Come on now. Hello. What you? What was the question? Yeah. Oh, murder. Is it okay to murder? No, it's not okay to murder. Murderers. No, it's not okay to murder, but it's okay to kill. You want me to explain or no, elaborate? No, we don't want to explain that. We give you No, no, no. It's it's real quick because I know right on point. It's okay to murder because murder can be in self-defense of your family or whatever you're trying to. I mean, it's okay to kill because kill can be. You could be killing somebody. Hold on, hold on. This tip. You could be killing somebody that's trying to come and mess with your family, right? But murder, I think this is where the King James Bible kind of the translation part. But murder is you literally the definition of murder is you killing somebody that don't got nothing to do with nothing and you just. I just kill you just because I'm riding down the street. How about the car? Bow, you go for a game member. I'm trying to prove something to it. That's murder. You know what I'm saying? I know. What I'm saying is, this is different between killing some kill is you. You can you can be protecting you somebody. Your family, right? You can be defending yourself, and you yeah. kill this man for touching your daughter. You see, but murder is you killing somebody for no reason at all. So. Well, in in, in English, yeah, it yeah, seems yeah. like you, if you use a murder word in English, then you're gonna look at it as kill, and that's the problem. You have to go back to the Hebrew and see what they meant by murder. And what he's saying is true. I, I knew that. I just I'm just messing with him. I knew he's gonna say that. But when you murder, that's that's why he that's sees he's just notice the commandments. And we can prove it in scripture. See, notice the commandments. He says, "Thou shalt not kill." Then he turns around telling them to go kill all the Amorites. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. how he do that? Yeah. How can he say, "Thou shalt not kill," and then turn around and say, "Okay, Moses, I want you to take Joshua and all the men of war. And I want you to go wipe out everybody that's in that land so you can have." It. Yeah. That's kill. So now we got to find out what he means by killing and what he means by murder. Because if I think with the way the U.S. the United States have taught me what murder is, then I'm going to be thrown off. Yeah. And if I yeah. think the way the United States taught me what killing is, then I'm going to be thrown off. Yeah. So that's what the brother is saying. That You have to look at it from a Hebrew perspective. of Because these were Hebrew people that this was written to. It wasn't the United States people. It was the Hebrew people. And they had different definitions for words that... Similar to our words, you know what I'm saying? So that's what he's saying. Murder in Hebrew doesn't mean murder in English. Killing in Hebrew doesn't mean killing in English. You have to, that's why we try to get away from so much the English and get more in the Hebrew. That would solve all the confusions in the scripture because people look at it in an English standpoint and say, No, nah, man, murder me for murder somebody but this is a trans remember this is a translation a transliteration of some other scripture somewhere which uh the hebraic scriptures you know so what he's saying is true it's the difference between the murder in in in, in hebrew and a murder in english and a murder a killing in hebrew and a killing in english and he has to make that difference because otherwise you're going to have to answer all these questions in the scripture of how he tell them on the mount, thou shalt not kill. That's one of the Ten Commandments. And then he tells them to go kill all these people. Yeah. He even tells uh, all through the scriptures, go slay him. Go slay his family. Kill everybody in the thing. Leave no lives. Uh, not to kill all the livestock. Kill the church. Everybody. <laughs> he can't do that and then tell them thou shalt not kill unless there is a difference in the definition. Mm -hmm. So that's what the brother is saying. He's right. You know, I, I was going to go into it, but I'm going to let him explain what he's right. It's a difference in the definition. Then I can get with you afterwards, anybody, and go over the definition of it. I just for the sake of time. All right, so uh, 19. But, you know, and again, like he said, you just can't walk up and murder somebody. Mm -mm. Deliberately. You know. In your realm. Yeah, in your, you know, just because you 
because I don't yeah, like evil in your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah racist, exactly. That's racist. a good way to put it. Yeah, because I just got evil because I'm gonna justify by. <laughs> you know, some people do that. They justify thou shall not kill and all this stuff and murder and all this stuff and say that some spirit told them to do it or some old crazy junk. <laughs> But yeah, that's you know. the truth of spirit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You think about it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we talking about the book of Job. Yeah, that's true. 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 Yeah, that's Swerving on I mean, you what? intoxicated what? itself I'm means uh, something else is controlling me. I'm under influence of something else. I'm not influenced by my own mind. I'm influenced by something else. Mm -hmm. And it's the alcohol that influences me to do something I normally wouldn't do. So that means I'm intoxicated with it. That's what drunk is. I mean, like, can I drink? Yes. He says that, you know, even Tim, Paul tells him to drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. And then in other places in, in the because we go by the whole Bible, not just the New Testament, and other places tell them to drink wine with some of the feasts. But he always tells them not to be drunk. Because drunkenness is that's what sober minded being. I mean, you Peter can't get even to said heaven neither by being a drunkard. Exactly. A drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. He will not. Because why? He's influenced by something else. You're supposed to be influenced by what? The most this, high. The yeah. most high. So when you do that, a couple of things going wrong now. You intoxicated. Yeah, yeah, I can be an idolatry, all kinds of stuff. We go on and on and on. But yeah. all right, so reveling. What is reveling? Wow, reveling. That's that's cool. Reveling is wow. That's it. That's, that's it. Wild party. A wild that's party. What it is. Well, I don't know what's control. Cool. You know what a wild party is? I got a party here. I was finna say. <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Nah, no, no, I ain't trying to take you far from what you. No, I'm saying we can have a, we can have a party here. Yeah, but what's a wild party? It's it's out, it means out of control party. Yeah, it's the it's the right, like right. what Christmas used to be like when they they, they get together you and men saying? be having sex with each other. This is a wild party. When I bring the strippers in. Orgy. Yeah. And I got the orgies going, and I got the smoking weed out of my mind. This is a wi I'm wild. I'm, become, I'm, I'm out of the norm and into something. I'm wild into something else. This is a wild party. Now, do I go to a party? Do you go to a party or not? Yes. If I want to go to a party, yeah. But when it becomes that type of atmosphere, then this is considered as remnants. Because some people are going to tell you, well, the Mashiach, he went to some feast and party. Yeah, but he did not go to a wild party where women were ripping their shirts off and men walking around with the nothing on the bottoms and they sleeping with, they just <laughs> sexing it up. This is a, what, you're reveling there. You're entered into reveling. You're in a wild, you're, you're, you're laughing. You know, you're not unleavened. You're laughing. Because the Mashiach says what? The Mashiach, and I say Mashiach because the Mashiach is in the Old Testament. That's him. It's not the followers. That's why I said Mashiach. The Mashiach commands us to what? Cover up our nakedness. So if I go to the party where they uncover their nakedness, it's, turned, it's wild now. The same as the civics did. It's out of control. The control is to cover up. I'm at a party where they're covering up and they ain't, you know, out their mind, like high as a kite, drunk. Like yeah. Drunk is a wild party. Everybody knows drunk is a skunk. So I got to say the contents of control. That's what the difference right there. So, all right, real quick, now we're going to go over what we should be doing, finally. All right, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, justice, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such there is no law. Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love is the foundation of everything. All right, if I don't have no love, Paul said I can go, I can give. Now, is charity love? Yes. Huh? Yes. Charity? Yeah, yeah. Charity is one of the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. What do you say? Love and action. Love and action. So if I don't have charity, then I'm like a, a, a tinkling symbol. I'm, I'm, I'm something that's out of out of place. It means that, so is giving to the Salvation Army the love he's talking about? No. It, if, if you give all my goods, the love he's talking about? Because some people think that if I give... No. Everything no. I got, then no. I'm showing love. No. I mean, if you're doing no. it because, you know, people genuinely need it and you're giving out of the goodness of your heart, then yes, most definitely. But is that the love? No, that's not the love he's talking about. No. 
Uh, the love he talking about is the keeping of the commandments. And as long as we keep the commandments, we know how to treat our brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be treating uh -huh. your brothers right by giving them what they don't have? I mean, <laughs> if I need some shoes, bro, give me some shoes. Yeah. So now you gotta go to the Salvation Army to do that. So that's so that's love. Uh, uh, me keeping the commandment. He said, "If you love me, you keep my commandments." That's, he defines what love is. It's the keeping of the commandments. So no matter how much I give to the poor. No matter how much I take to Salvation Army, no matter how much I hang my hand out the one to get a man a little 50 cent or something, that's not the love he's talking about. All right? The love he's talking about, you keeping these commandments. That's the only thing going to get you into the kingdom. And the king, and one of the commandments is, remember, the poor. So you're still in, I'm saying, I ain't saying not to do it. I'm saying you're still in there, but that's not, because it's people give to the Salvation Army, and evil is I don't know what. It's people that give to, you know what I'm saying, to the people, the homeless people. And it's just evil is all the world. So that's not going to get you nowhere by doing all this stuff. That's not the love he's talking about. The joy. What is joy? And we'll be finished after we go with this. Because we, we, again, we're dealing with leaven. This is the real definition of leaven. When you got all this stuff going on, this is a perfect chapter to show you that you need to clean some of this stuff out of your life. You got you you got drunkenness, you got all this stuff going on, then you need to get some of the leaven out. You're puffed up. You like this piece of bread. And for y'all don't know that leaven, all it is is a killing aid. It kills the reason why the bread swells because the leaven kills it. The bread should be like this, it's unleavened. And you put leaven in it, it kills it. It's just oh, like yeah. a dog or something when it dies, it swells up from the death of the bread. Oh, the, That's what I, I love the, uh, the oh, way yeah, it's supposed this. to look. Yeah, this is the way it is. It's That's kinda, the Passover bread, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, so, um, it don't I swell. I talked to you after the Yeah, yeah, you talked to me. It don't swell. So, joy. What is joy? What is real joy? <coughs> when somebody repent and come to the truth. I mean, we ain't the angels or nothing, but. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know they rejoice so much. If they rejoice and over, should we rejoice over? Well, maybe, maybe I feel, maybe I'm glad because I got $1,000 on my income tax. <laughs> joyful, boy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm feeling good right now. Is that joy? Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Man. <laughs> I would say he would say so. It's a form of joy. I mean, maybe I'm happy because I just, I just, me and my wife just got back together. Well, and, uh, we had a good night last night. I'm, I'm happy. I'm feeling good now. I'm on top of the world. Well, I'm King, able, uh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. <laughs> well, King David, he rejoiced it. He rejoiced uh, in the light of doing the Most High will. Yeah. So that's probably yeah. what we should rejoice for. Exactly, exactly. I but like but maybe, that. maybe, maybe my joy is, uh, I, you know, I, I, I like to go around with my fellow. I like to go around with my homeboys and hang out. Maybe that's my joy. Yeah. But is that the joy that he's talking about right here? That one, in other words, is that one of the fruits of the ruach? It says spirit, but it mean ruach. Is that one of the fruits of the ruach, a spirit? No. 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 No, because the joy, should, he said, your joy is fulfilled in the Mashiach. So my joy, again, is in keeping these commandments. Yeah. This is the fruit of the spirit. Just because you see a person happy all the time doesn't mean they have the spirit. How do I know when you have the spirit? You must produce love, not giving me. Not saying, hey, bro, I know you you in need. Here you go, bro. I'm sure you good, bro. All right, brother. A little 20 or 30 or 10 or 5. That ain't love. Love is when you keep commandments. Because if you keep commandments, you're going to automatically love me. You automatically yeah. going to do me right. Automatically. You see what I'm saying? So it ain't dropping off or helping somebody a thousand times. It's keeping the commandments. Because when you do that, you're going to automatically treat me right. Because that's what the commandments is about. He also said, um, how, the, how is it that we're going to know that he... We his disciples. By the love you have one for another. The action of love, not the word love. Not saying, I love you, bro. I love you. The action of it. The act, putting in action. Give me $20. Okay. <laughs> Give me $20. That still ain't me paid. showing you love. Me <laughs> showing you love is when I say, Lou, Lou, you, you slipping, slipping up on that commandment right on now, the bro. commandment, bro. You That's should. the love he's talking about. <laughs> you oh, you say, it. you say, hey, you hey, man, you tripping, bro. You need, you need to, you need to get yourself together, bro. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't right. He, he right. Bro. I see you. I see you. Right. You know what I'm saying? You slipping a little bit. That's what he talking. That's when I know you love me. When you tell me something that's gonna keep me that's out of that fire, me. that fire at the end, that eternal fire that the people gonna have that that's don't keep the commandment. You know that yes. of fire. When you tell me something to keep me out of that, that's what he says is real love, and that's keeping the commandment. Yeah. All right. So peace. You know what's real peace? 
Again, all this is, yeah. I can tell you right now, all this is the Mashiach. Exactly. When your peace is in the Mashiach. When your peace is in keeping the commandments. This is how we know when you have the Ruach. When your peace is in keeping the commandments. When your joy is in keeping the commandments. When your love is in keeping the commandments. This is the fruit of the Ruach. Not fruits like many, but this is one fruit. One fruit that like one cake consists of sugar, flour, and all that. But it's still one cake. So this is one Ruach with... These attributes that consist that make up the spirit. So you you must be long suffering. What's long suffering? Patience. Endure to the end. Endure to the end. No matter how long the end may be, is endure to the end. Huh? Long suffering. You take long off for it. What does it say? Suffering. So all right. So now all he's saying is to long suffer. Suffering is one of the fruits of the spirit. Uh -huh. Nobody about that want to <laughs> believe that, but that's one of the attributes of the spirit. Suffering. Why are you suffering? Because he said that all things are expedient, but they're not. I mean, all things are lawful, but they're not expedient. Because he suffered. Well, that's right. So what did he do to suffer, though? He says, I come down here and I have set myself apart for whose sake? I would say. Not for his own sake, for our sake. So he suffered for who? The for us. Life. So I should take on this mind of Christ or the Mashiach, and I should take on the mind of suffering for others. Yeah. Long suffering for others. Taking down, not having for others. Not meaning that you go pay this brother light bill and you leave your let your life get cut off. Not that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oh, you gonna you gonna run out of gas and put some gas in this brother car? You gonna run out of gas? That's not what he's talking about. No, that's not long suffering. That's not the suffering he's talking about. The suffering he's saying is that, huh? Yeah, that's, that that don't even make sense. But some people think that's gonna get them somewhere. Yeah, I gave. I, I, you heard it in church all the time. Yeah, I gave that problem came. I gave my I gave my life. I'm bleed. I'm bleed God. Man, that didn't make no sense at all. He didn't tell you to do that. I mean, he might have did something for him if he ain't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's going to do let me say something. You know what I mean? Because the most, I give, the most I bless you with the money to pay your life bill. And then you say, oh, most I, I know you gave it to me, but my brother here, he ain't paid here, so I'm going to give it to him. You just give me another, you know what I'm saying, another, make another way for me to pay my life bill. Yeah. That's, not, that's not what he said. Why did he get mad? What's that? That's, that's, not, that's not what he told us to do. He, that's not long suffering. That's that's not even suffering. That's just being stupid. stupid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you get mad and upset with the most high. Huh? Hey, stupid. Be nice. Say. Oh, yeah. Not being a good steward. Yeah, that's a better way to dress it up. Hey, but one but thing, you not being hey. a good steward. You know, and that's what the scriptures are. Yeah. Right? Hey, one thing about it, the most high gives you wisdom now. You get your wisdom. Get, hold up. If you keeping the commandments, so if you ain't keeping the commandments, you likely, most likely, do something like what he just said. Sad. That Her that's <laughs> called heresy. They tell you to do something that's, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. If a man, listen, if any man that say he's from the Most High or God, and he come to you and say you need to get him some because he is a man of God, and you need to just believe God or have faith. Even though, you know what I'm saying, because he's a man of God and he's bringing the scriptures up behind the widow woman gave to Elijah and all this stuff here. Then you need to tell him, brother, first off, 